into it, right? The first one, the iPhone 14 Plus. It is here and it is uh, it's exactly what we thought it was going to be, right? I mean, that's, I mean, what are we expecting with this 14 Plus now that it's kind of out and we've seen everything about it? What? Well, it, is it what all it was cracked up to be or yeah. it's a bigger screen iPhone 14, right? So if you yeah. want a real good iPhone, but you don't need all the pro features and you don't need the always on display and the promotion and stuff like that, 14 plus makes a lot of sense. Though I think this phone is going to have a cloud over it. Like, is what's is a Charlie Brown where like the gray cloud follows yeah. the kid or whatever it is? It, it, it's going to. Al, Alica is giving me a thumbs up off screen. Thank you, Alec. Uh, it's it, that's what it is because there is just I feel like this controversy around this phone for a couple of reasons. One is that according to what we know right now, iPhone 14 isn't doing all that hot. It's lower than Apple expected it in terms of like expectations. That's not great. And then. It's just, it's that mediocre experience on a larger display, which is good for a lot of people, but I feel like the price is a huge issue with this phone because for $200, you can upgrade to the Pro equivalent, the Pro Max, and I feel like for that money, you are getting so much for your dollar that it just might make this phone sort of not worth it, right? That's what I'm thinking. Like, it's just, it sits in a weird spot. Okay, so for... I guess kind of t to lay it out. When this was first announced, I think we, I, I still kind of think this, but it, it felt like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. The mini was a flop. So instead of having two phones, a small and a big, or I guess a mini and a regular, then now we're gonna do a big and a regular because I mean, if you look at past track records, people seem to like big screens, but at the same time, you mentioned this before we were shooting and it really seems more so I mean, yes, that is true. People do like bigger screens, but what they like even more is cheaper phones. Mm. And, you know, the SE isn't cutting it for a lot of people. That is the most affordable iPhone. So I'd rather buy, I mean, this is just what I'm thinking. Obviously the phone is just out. So like, who knows what this is going to look like in the future, but just kind of the, the thought behind it is like, I'd rather pay, you know, significantly cheaper for a 13 or even a 12 rather than extra for that bigger screen of a 14, which already isn't giving me much different compared to the 13, except for the size. And then, like you said, if I'm already spending that, I'm already in the mindset of I could spend some more money. Maybe I'll get a 13 Pro Max. Maybe I'll get just go for the 14 Pro. You know, there's it's kind of in a weird middle spot where I think at some point, I think it will start to do better as time goes on and as people have it in their hands. And especially when you go to the Apple store, you see this, you see it next to the 13 or 14 pro max, you see the same screen size, but it's significantly cheaper than the pro max. So I could see it starting to get, get, uh, you know, more sales more hype around it. But in terms of just the initial thoughts of this phone, it's just kind of boring. And I don't, I don't know. I, makes me just wish that Apple kept around the mini, even though if people are not going to buy these phones either way, then just, let's just make a mini because at least that's unique. It's tough too, because I feel like there is this vocal minority of people who are like, I love the mini. I want a pro mini. I'd spend the money on a mini. But if you look at the data and from what we've seen, no one was buying the mini for a couple of reasons. I think that some people didn't maybe like the smaller screen thing. They didn't like the battery life compromises. But I feel like for a lot of people, it was just too expensive. And that's just like you said, um, do people want a cheap phone or do they want a small phone? And I feel like the iPhone SE success, some will say it's because it's a small screen phone, but I feel like you know, by and large, it's because it's a cheap phone. So yeah. that's sort of one of the problems. The other problem is, and maybe this is a very US centered approach, but I should just say, because we're here in the US is what we see, the way that these phones are marketed, it's not, what is it, $899 and $999 and $1099, it's $42 a month and $47 a month. It's, it's all broken down to the smallest common denominator. And when you're looking at these, how the carriers love to advertise them as you know payment installment plans, when you break it down in that sense and you're like a $5 difference between a uh, 15 or 15, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, 14 <laughs> plus, and a 14 Pro Max, when it's like a five to $10 difference a month, so many people, maybe rightfully so, can justify that move up based off the spec sheets. I mean, if you just look at these phones in a store side by side, a 14 plus 
and a 14 Pro Max, worlds apart. Dynamic Island, ProMotion, Always On, the camera system, there's a lot of reasons I could you know, justify that that $200 or whatever the monthly price is, is much better well spent going with a Max Pro Max rather than a Plus, even if you might not utilize all those features, because if you keep the phone for like three to four years, chances are you are going to use at least a couple of those features and probably be happy that you spent a little bit more money, well, relatively, when you compare that with $200 more to get objectively a way better phone. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I can kind of attest to that because, well, first of all, a little update. I am back on the 13 Pro because I did not like the Pro Max and I did not like the purple. So I returned both and I Oof. ordered a black uh, 14 Pro. So I'm waiting for my phone. But point being, when I ordered it, I decided to actually upgrade to 512 gigabytes, which Ooh. right now I'm on 256. And really the main reason for that was because the pro raw photos are so big and I take a lot of those photos. So, um, yeah, I wanted to just not ever have to think about it. But the main reason is because when I went in and looked, I'm on the Apple upgrade program, that's a monthly charge. That is, it, I think it was like $4 difference. Like you said, like it was something so minuscule. I'm like, that's worth it just to never have to think about space. Mm -hmm. I'm already in the upgrade program. So I'm paying it monthly anyway. Um, if I was not in the upgrade program, that's a different question because I probably would just buy the phone outright, but that's a whole different conversation. But point being, even for myself, who I'm in the weeds on all these things, I know everything. Even for me, it's like, well, it's like four, six, seven, whatever dollars more a month for the extra storage. It's totally worth it. Now, you know, 200 bucks more. Actually, now that I think about it, compared to the base to the 512, it's kind of like 200 bucks, right? So it's not, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's worth it. I think in a lot of ways, especially like if you said you're keeping this phone for, you know, three, four, maybe even five years, absolutely. It's worth going for the pro over the plus. Um, I guess one of the main touted features, at least from Apple, is that the battery life of this plus is supposed to be a lot or not, maybe not a lot better, but it's supposed to be the best in any iPhone. <sighs> Do you think that matters to people? I, I always like, I think battery life does matter, but I think the promoted battery life doesn't matter. Like, I don't know if anyone yeah. actually thinks about that. When I think phone. battery life is important to an extent. The problem is that's a great claim to make. And I'm sure that that does have really great battery life, but you also have to be okay with having a big screen sized phone. If you're not a fan of that, you know, 6.7 inch display, then who cares what the battery is life? Because you don't want to use the phone anyways. That's why you return the Pro Max. That's why I am begrudgingly using the Pro Max. <laughs> I don't care about the battery life as much because I really don't like the form factor of the phone. So I feel like if you're okay with the Plus and you like that screen size, then yeah, the better battery life, it's like a nice addition. But I feel like it's very hard to justify a Plus to someone when you look at all your options because in theory sounds great i know tons of people who don't need pro features but want a big screen iphone but when you get into the nitty-gritty on it and you look at the price it's just like hard to justify like yeah you could save 200 dollars, but in a lot of ways it might just be worth it i'm curious to see how this sells because you think it would sell well but i don't know and i'm really curious to see what does Apple do next year? Because the Mini, they kept it around for two generations. It flopped. It was done. With the 15, it makes sense to do a 15 Plus. Or maybe it doesn't because this phone just isn't worth keeping around. Do you think they just don't do a, uh, a third uh, option at all? Or maybe they just keep it to, uh, I should say, a fourth option. They just keep it to three. Do you think that is even in the cards for next year? You know, I was just thinking while you were saying this, what if the whole plan here is that this iPhone 15 Ultra that is rumored is actually coming, but it's going to require a price jump because of all the features packed into it, but Apple still wants to offer a bigger phone. So they introduced it this year. Next year, it's like easy to, you know, keep going. They can add some new features like an actual new processor and, you know, maybe new camera, stuff like that. It's an easier upgrade year over year. So that way, for those people that would typically go Pro Max, but don't want to spend, let's just say the extra 200 bucks for the ultra version, maybe they can still have this bigger screen. I don't know. Maybe that, that doesn't really fully flesh out because 
pro users wouldn't necessarily want to go back down to the regular, but I'm just thinking maybe this is their way to kind of have an option for everyone. They have the base for, or I guess for next year would be base 15. They have the plus 15 with the big screen. They have the base pro and then they have the ultra, which is like, you just want everything. That makes sense. But in term, let's just say that doesn't happen and we kind of stick to the same cycle we have now. That's, yeah, it's confusing. I think it really will just come down to sales and if it does well. Um, but also, you know, what made me think of that is that they're really differentiating the pro line and the uh, regular line. And I'm wondering if that's just the whole point here is like, who cares if it doesn't sell as many as maybe they had hoped, we're going to make these two separate lines of phones. So we need a bigger and a smaller. Maybe that's yeah, just I, don't, the whole point I don't know. I feel like Apple's done a really good job at sort of moving the needle and getting people up on phones, like getting them to spend more and more money. And it does make sense for them just to do a 15, 15 Pro, and 15 Ultra. I guess it really depends on the sales of this Plus. But I could totally see a world where that is the lineup and maybe Apple's done enough of their research to know that people are either going to go 15 or 15 Pro. Like, I'm sure there's a split there, and I'm sure... I wonder if they could even make more money by sort of taking that approach than sort of relying on this fourth phone. I don't know. I'm just... I'm very... um very curious to see how this sells because that's going to be a really big determination on what happens next year with the 15. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. I wonder if Apple would just make more money if they made one low end phone, quote, quote unquote, low end, you know, base phone. And then they just had the pros because then you're forced. If you want more, you have to go to a pro, which is automatically more money. I'm sure hundred percent sure Apple goes through all of these situations and there was some kind of data point that said making a bigger phone would work. And, you know, maybe that's not even here in the U S maybe in the U S the sales suck, but around the world, they, you know, blow up because a lot of, you know, here, I think these days people are using their phones more and more as their main device, but you know, there's still computers around, there's still iPads around that have bigger screens. Um, whereas in other countries, these phones are very much your only device. I know for, you know, my wife's family in the Philippines, we bought them a phone and that's literally their computer. She's doing school on it. She's doing everything. We bought them because that's just what they have. They don't have as much means. So whatever phone they get is their computer. So maybe having the biggest screen possible at an affordable price makes sense. So, you know, there, there's a lot of options here. I'm sure Apple has thought of it. I think what's going to be interesting is to see see if that actually pays off and what they do in the next year.